Fiona. Good morning, everyone. I hope you are all doing well for this final day of this amazing academy on Android implementers. So we're happy to see you um, at this first session. Um, and it's also our great pleasure to welcome Pamod Amarakun, who is uh, one of the lead implementers from HISP Sri Lanka. Hi, Pamod. Hi, everyone. Yes, thank you. Thank you for being here with us. So we are very excited because Pamod is going to do a presentation on um, how to use mobile uh, for nutrition in Sri Lanka at the field level. So it, it's going to be very, very uh, exciting and interesting. So Pamod, thank you for being available to do this um, presentation for us. Um, also, dear participants, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to, uh, to ask them on the Experts Lounge for Asia uh, channel that you can find on Slack. So if you don't see it, um, all, the only thing that you need to do is basically click on the plus sign and then browse the different channels and you will see Experts Lounge for Asia. So really, if you have any question uh, for Pamod, you can ask them on this channel and then Pamod will reply to each of your question during this session. So yes, looking forward to reading your, your questions. Pamod, thank you once again, and you have now the floor. All right, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Uh, and first of all, a big thank you to the uh, University of Oslo team for inviting me to join in this session uh, on the final day of the Android Implementers Academy. I was uh, just a while ago reminding uh, Martha that uh, the last academy about on Android implementation we had in Sri Lanka exactly around one year back. So it's kind of like a coincidence that uh, I'm getting the opportunity to uh, join this session uh, just after one year from the last academy. Right. So first of all, uh, let me share my presentation. Right. So. Uh, what I will be doing in this uh, next uh, 30 minutes or so is to briefly describe the use case uh, where we use the mobile, the DHIS2 mobile for nutrition monitoring uh, in Sri Lanka. But uh, I will try to make it generic as much as possible because this is a kind of a, a different use case to as uh, what you will be, uh, what you have discussed so far uh, in this academy. Because here we are, we are talking about a custom mobile application that was developed about five years back and has been in use, in use in Sri Lanka uh, over the last few years with, of course, a lot of challenges. So uh, we will discuss about these challenges towards the uh, end of the presentation and, of course, uh, the lessons learned out of these challenges. Right, so uh, uh, I'm Pramod Amarakon representing his Sri Lanka, and this uh, project is uh, specifically in Sri Lanka, but I will try to uh, make it as generic as possible. Right, so first of all, a little bit of uh, background about the use case. Uh, now, when it comes to South Asia region, Sri Lanka generally has very good public health uh, indicators compared to uh, other countries in the region. But uh, one issue that Sri Lanka has been struggling over the last uh, two decades is uh, about some few indicators related to nutrition. So for example, you can see severe wasting, wasting, overweight and stunting. We do not have that advantage that we had uh, over the other countries. Uh, when it comes to this particular public health indicators. Uh, I mean, that has been the trend over the last one decade or so. So what happened about uh, seven, eight years back uh, was that uh, this issue has been discussed in detail and uh, the presidential secretariat itself uh, formed a multi-sector committee to address this uh, the issue of uh, nutrition at field level. And then uh, of course, like they decided several things. One was uh, in fact, um, to identify the real issue and then get uh, proper information for decision making. And then uh, of course, to integrate uh, all this information into a national system so that uh, uh, when, we, when we want to do health and other sectoral planning, this information could be uh, incorporated. Okay, so how we joined this project was that uh, to, fulfill, to fulfill the information requirement and basically uh, the presidential secretariat wanted the information solution to capture these requirements. So the basic requirements were 
uh, to register the children who are having malnutrition into this uh, nutrition monitoring uh, program. And this had to take place at the field level. I mean, not at the hospitals or at health facilities, but uh, at field level when the healthcare workers in Sri Lanka, we call them public health midwives who are actually in charge of uh, nutrition. So when they do the field level visits, they wanted to get registered. And then once uh, these uh, uh, children with malnutrition have been registered in the program, they wanted to monitor nutrition parameters such as uh, height and weight on a regular uh, fashion. And also they mm -hmm. wanted to identify household risk factors. So these risk factors could have been uh, directly health related or maybe uh, related to other sectors such as agriculture, um, um, social welfare, things like that. And then they also wanted to obtain household geolocations. And uh, then in the mobile app, I mean, like in this particular solution itself, they wanted to uh, have some basic uh, visualizations. Uh, so for the mobile user, that is a field health worker so that they can get an idea. And then once this data is collected at field level, it had to be as soon as possible synchronized with the central uh, uh, data repository uh, so that uh, data is available to everyone else, right? So how we uh, approach this use case, now I'm talking about five years back, was that we decided uh, to uh, give a smart mobile device to the field health worker that is a public health midwife. And then uh, once this data is collected, we thought because we had a strong DHS to infrastructure in Sri Lanka, that we will synchronize this information collected in the mobile device into a central DHS to base uh, data repository. And once that happens, the data had to be kind of uh, 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 overseen and uh, approved by the medical officer of health. He's kind of like the supervising officer of all these field health staff, uh, super supervising public health doctor, in fact, at, uh, at field level. So there are like about 50 of these public health uh, midwives who may be uh, under the supervision of this public health doctor. And once that is done, the data had to be uh, available with the other stakeholders, that is the, uh, I mean, the ministries and uh, the other multi-sector stakeholders and the parents. Right, so this of course, five years back was a major task because uh, we did not have a, a sophist very sophisticated uh, Android application, thankfully to our Android team. I mean, we have a very good application right now, but uh, those days it was not so. So uh, what we basically did was we designed a custom mobile application which uh, transmits information back and forth uh, with the DHS2 central server using the DHS2 web API. And again, we, we also had, uh, uh, had another issue, like they wanted some custom uh, user interfaces which were not available in the standard DHS2 web applications. So we also had to do another custom web application also to support this uh, scenario. So we did that. And then um, of course, uh, our entire information landscape was full. So this was our, uh, our solution which you designed that time, right? So let me just now quickly go through a few of the uh, screen, uh, the interfaces that were, that, is, that were there in our initial application. So first of all, I mean, uh, we had this uh, uh, use authentication. And once that is done, one important feature we had was uh, because we were using uh, 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 the public health uh, midwives. These are the field level uh, health workers to collect this data. We, we needed uh, the application to be available in uh, in all three languages that are used in Sri Lanka. So we had the trilingual user interface. And then followed by that, uh, of course, uh, once you are logged in, you can select an area, uh, very much similar to data capture uh, workflow. And then of course, uh, we had from there onwards, a kind of a custom interface where we use a lot of colors uh, to identify whether a particular child who's, uh, uh, who, who's listed here is a child who's being actively monitored or it's a, a more child whose nutrition status is now okay. So to indicate this, we were using a lot of colors as you are seeing here. And then uh, these are of course uh, the standard, you know, like the registration process. And then uh, we had a uh, few options to identify what is the main nutrition issue the child is having. And of course uh, we had the child's profile and this is a basic, basic search criteria. And here I'm going to mention again, another uh, user interface where, I use, where we use a lot of colors. So for example, uh, those days uh, uh, we had a major issue about the deletion process. Like once, a uh, say in, in DHS terms, when a track entity instance is deleted, 
how it should be updated with the uh, central server and like there's, there's a time delay and then but, but, and how to indicate this in mobile application. So we, we again used uh, different colors for this one. Right. And then this uh, interface is a bit uh, important one. So here, of course, what we do is like, uh, now, as you can see here, uh, here the particular ch uh, child is 16 months old and a uh, uh, value has been entered for the height and weight. So what we wanted was to give a visual indication to the field health worker once that person is enter entering a particular figure, uh, where that figure stands, because these are just numbers. So for example, what you see here is like when the field health worker enters this value 78, what the app does is it kind of verifies uh, with the WHO, we have the standard deviation values for uh, 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 height for age, uh, weight for age, things like that. And it verifies and it gives a visual indication with a color code saying, okay, this 78 is kind of an okay value. So if it is okay, it's usually light green or um, uh, dark green. And here, of course, it's amber color. So the weight is not that okay. And if it is really less than uh, 2 SD, it gives you a visual verification with uh, uh, color like uh, bright red. So that way we try to enhance the data quality at the point of capture itself by giving an application of uh, the, the, what they actually enter. And then again, uh, the same visual indication we had in another instance. So this is kind of like you are weaving event data. So in the event data itself, uh, we had a background color change to indicate where uh, this value stands with regard to WHO standard deviation values. And here, of course, we had another uh, interface to capture uh, the household risk factor. So they do a household visit and then and there they capture uh, what they see as the deficits, uh, which is contributing to the child's malnutrition. And then the most important thing is the charting. So uh, let me show you another screen. So as you can see here, in the mobile app itself, uh, the public health midwives, the field health workers were able to visualize three types of charts. First one is height for age, the second is weight for age, and the third is weight for height. So these kind of charts kind of, uh, it, it gives a visual verification about where the child's nutrition is heading. Uh, it's a longitudinal visualization, so it's not just a snapshot idea about what is today's uh, height and weight and not like that. So when we have this kind of charting, you can see uh, whether this is a child whose nutrition status is improving over the last two to three months, or it's deteriorating, or this one needs a special attention, maybe uh, needs to be uh, seen by a pediatrician, uh, there may be some underlying clinical issue. So this you can identify just by looking at uh, this uh, uh, the, the the charts for height uh, height as well as weight. So this we incorporated into the into the mobile application itself, right? And then again, uh, the field health workers. Uh, another thing they had to do was uh, they needed to uh, uh, do kind of some kind of a presentation, a briefing to the public health uh, doctor who supervising them on a monthly basis. So for that one, they needed some statistics because the thing is. These field health workers, for most of them, they did not have any kind of access to a laptop or desktop device. And the mobile device was the only device that they are using for uh, data entry as well as visualization. So this is where, in fact, like uh, we might have a requirement in the DHS to mobile application itself to provide them with some kind of analytics in the application. Because the issue is uh, there are a lot of health workers who don't get uh, uh, access to a desktop or laptop. So the mobile device is uh, not only for the data capture for these users, so they, they would like to have it uh, enabled with some visualizations and analytic features as well. So this is why uh, we had uh, a, a very, very brief uh, analytics so or some, some report that was available in the mobile app. So here you can see uh, how many children under this particular uh, midwife's care are having each of these nutrition issues. And again, uh, they wanted this one also like to see how many were under each of these uh, standard deviations so that they can, uh, this, this is something that they have to submit to uh, for, for official uh, statistics purposes. So this kind of uh, basic reporting was also available uh, inside the mobile application itself. Right. And now another requirement was that uh, uh, the health sector administrators or district level administrators, they wanted, uh, few other uh, uh, visualizations which were not available in DHS to about five years back. So one was this uh, uh, donut chart kind of, uh, and also the progression of how 
uh, the num uh, the the number of children with each of these risk factors were evolving over time. So this kind of longitudinal charting was also not available that time, and so we had to de design a separate web application to serve this purpose. And uh, you can do a trend analysis, and then again, uh, yeah, there are like different kind of uh, uh, tools available in this uh, web applications that I'm mentioning. So once again, I must mention you. So this is some work that I have been, I mean, that, that was initiated about five years back. But now, of course, if there are any, any, any uh, Android developers here, if you want to develop a custom Android application, it is not at all that difficult. So our Android team has done a SDK and I mean, maybe it has already been discussed during the academy itself. So uh, things are much, much easier compared to uh, the difficult process I have mentioned, uh, uh, which was started about five years back. Right, so uh, this is in fact a few screenshots of our, um, you know, revamped application, which was done about two, two uh, years back uh, with kind of, I mean, different interfaces. Okay, so this is a brief timeline. Uh, we started, of course, uh, the design and development uh, in, in 2015, but uh, formally uh, started in 2016, January. And thereafter we have been implementing in few districts uh, uh, in Sri Lanka over the next few years. Of course, this year, everything has been kind of in a halt. We could not uh, uh, expand at all uh, due to the pandemic situation, but uh, this is what has happened during the last five years. Of course, the implementation, the biggest challenge. Um, we, I mean, like what we did was we went up to the sub-district level or else a, a level where we had, uh, which was under supervision of a public health doctor. We call it a medical officer of health area. So uh, our team went to each of these medical office of health area. We may have about 10 of them per district. And we conducted uh, uh, one full day training program on how to use the device. I mean, what is the device? It's, I mean, to start with, I mean, what is this mobile device? And um, some uh, idea about how to protect the device and hardware, how to turn it on, and things like that. And also um, how to use different applications, uh, like, I mean, maybe the email, uh, and how to set up a Google account, things like that. So basically, in fact, like uh, uh, two to three hours was consumed uh, to describe about uh, this device and how to use it. And thereafter, of course, we uh, the, the workflow, one, one advantage was that uh, because we were following the same workflow, the workflow was very, uh, I mean, it was not complicated at all because uh, it was what they have been doing over the years. And then we showed them the application and how they can use it to match their requirements in the workflow. And then of course, uh, towards the latter part, we had this kind of a small group discussion uh, within like, I mean, within with, uh, groups of like uh, uh, six uh, public health midwives and discussed uh, what, what are the challenges they might encounter. And we kind of uh, gave them individual attention. Right. So this is uh, practically how it is used at uh, field level. And uh, as of now, uh, we had more than uh, 20,000 children who have been registered in the application and monitored in the uh, Android, uh, monitored, uh, the nutrition status is monitored at field level. Right, so let me now uh, discuss about something important uh, about the experience because the technology might, I mean, it'll all keep on changing because I mean, the, 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 even the application development process that we started five years back is much different because we have better technology nowadays and the DHS2 mobile is very streamlined and uh, better documentation. So, uh, I mean, it has really, uh, uh, so everything has enhanced over the five years, but uh, what will not change is uh, the, the lessons learned. So what actually worked? One thing was the interface design because uh, what we understood was that interfaces uh, means a lot because uh, when we are doing a mobile implementation, we. Uh, compared to a web uh, interface where we have, a, we are, when we are using a laptop or desktop device, we are really restricted by the screen size. So we have to optimally utilize the screen area that we have uh, so that, I mean, we have to use a lot of color coding. And as I mentioned to you, uh, and we might have to, you know, like if you want to highlight something, uh, then that also we have to focus on how to do it. And then again, uh, if you are using uh, multiple languages, we have to incorporate it and we did not, try to create brand new interfaces. So whatever the interfaces that we use, for example, this charting, uh, the, the color coding, things like that, they were already there in the workflow. 
So this, uh, because we also did a qualitative study, a research study uh, going parallelly. And what we identified was that one uh, salient feature that was highlighted by the end users was that the interfaces, what we used uh, was very familiar. And then of course, offline functionality, which is really required when you are doing a P-level implementation, because there are so many areas where you don't get uh, good internet connectivity and maybe some, some areas, no connectivity at all. So data has to be, uh, of course, uh, stored offline, uh, which is of course, uh, I mean, supported by default in our data capture application that we have now. And the troubleshooting mechanisms at field level, because now here the issue is, unlike the web, uh, the, the application is just running on uh, the user's device. And our experience is that it is not in a controlled environment. There are so many other applications that are installed in that device and there are so many variables. So there has to be some kind of uh, capacity building at field level. So what we did was we identified uh, uh, at least like uh, two to three public health midwives from an area uh, during this training program. And we kind of isolated them and we provided them with some additional technical information on how to uh, troubleshoot and help other users. This was really helpful because uh, it was kind of uh, filtering out a lot of issues which should have otherwise uh, come all the way up to the national level implementers and the supporting staff because then things become very complicated. They, I mean, like we are getting so much of, uh, so many uh, requests which could have been handled at field level all the way up to the national level if the field level doesn't have the sufficient capacity. So we built up capacity at field level to address these minor issues. And then again, uh, regarding repair and maintenance of devices. So when these devices were procured by the Ministry of Health, uh, we ensured that it is procured through, uh, I mean, like when they are deciding on uh, a supplier, we selected a supplier who has a countrywide uh, service network so that uh, when there is an issue, the, the field level health worker doesn't have to come to a, a larger town or a district level capital uh, to get it repaired, which should kind of cost them uh, I mean, like another, maybe a full day. But that again means you are losing one precious day where they could have done uh, so much of other field work. So we made sure that this maintenance service, they in fact uh, reach out to the end user, the field level health worker, and collect the device and repairs it and hand it over again. But then again, there were like uh, challenges because of course uh, the service providers, they tend to uh, increase the cost uh, to cover these as well. Right. Then uh, of course, incorporating solution into operational review process. So what we actually tried to do was like, it was not just for data capture. Once this data is captured, we had this monthly review meeting at this medical officer of health who's kind of the supervising public health doctor level. So in that one that, uh, I mean, all these midwives uh, will have to uh, make some comments about uh, whether they are, whether the nutrition status is progressing in her area or whether there are any deficits. If so, what is actually contributing, what can be improved. So there, there, is, there will be kind of a critical evaluation on the data entry process, which happens uh, in this monthly meeting. So this was providing them uh, a very good feedback and uh, uh, this in turn, like uh, it had so many uh, 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 positives. So one thing is that it will provide the feedback. Uh, so if a person has done some mistake, uh, they'll be guided on how to uh, prevent that from happening again. And again, uh, it will also provide some kind of a motivation to the people who have been collecting data because they know that their data, that the data that they're collecting is all again going to be uh, useful at a higher level. So this was, again, something that we found as very useful. So what you're seeing here is uh, uh, one of these um, uh, monthly review meetings uh, where, uh, in fact, uh, uh, one professor from uh, University of Oslo also attended in one of these reviews. Uh, this is, again, in, in Jaffna districts, which was uh, troubled by three decades of war. So we kind of had a lot of uh, challenges in implementing this district, but uh, it has been really successful. Right. Um, okay. Then coming back to what did not work, first of all, the mobile data plan, because uh, I mean, it is, it is not that in these kind of projects that uh, we can do 100%, uh, uh, I mean, the entire process we can do uh, in the 100% optimal way. It doesn't happen because there are so many uh, compromises we have to make because we may be just one party uh, who's advising the government stakeholders on what should be done. But then again, we might have to be uh, happy with what, what we are receiving. So here, of course, 
uh, the the implementing parties could not come uh, come into a good consensus about how to manage this uh, data plan so what was decided was that they will be providing an incentive uh, to the end users uh, for their mobile data but this didn't kind of turn out to be working that well because uh, what happened was that uh, they were kind of uh, overusing uh, the data for uh, different personal uh, 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 i mean whatever the requirements so that uh, there was a chance that uh, the data quota is over uh, within like two week, two weeks, uh, the one month data quota. So how we in fact tackle this was that we were asking this uh, the 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 end users because they were supposed to pay a visit to this field level of uh, we call it uh, the MOH office at least uh, once a week for other routine purposes. So all these offices they had uh, the Wi-Fi connectivity. So what we what we asked them was if you don't have mobile data at least when you come to the office use the Wi-Fi and try to synchronize. So that was, again, I mean, there was a delay in uh, getting the data, but uh, I mean, that was a compromise we had to make. And then again, the replacement of devices. So we had a service plan implemented, but then again, the lifetime of a mobile device is uh, pretty short, like maybe maximum two to three years. Then uh, whether you will have sufficient fun funding in the state sector to re uh, replace these devices, uh, 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 when they are out of order is again an issue that we faced and uh, which we have not been able to successfully address. Then again, the technical capacity at district level. So thing is, uh, as I mentioned, like we tried to build up uh, some level of capacity at field level, but then again, after that, we could not, we did not have sufficient technical capacity at all districts. So sometimes uh, if something could not be addressed at the field level, the request had to come all the way up to the national level, which again is kind of a cumbersome process because there's a lot of delays and uh, we are sometimes not able to understand what these users are meaning uh, uh, by, by the different issues that they're having. So this is this again is a problem. And then again, the version upgrades. Of course, we did not, I think uh, it may have been discussed about the use of MDM. Uh, unfortunately for this one, we have not been able to use MDM so far. So we have issues because we are using the Google Play Store uh, even up to this moment. We have been trying to use other options, but uh, I mean, it has not been materialized. So with that, of course, uh, we are not really sure when we do a proper, I mean, when we, when we do a version upgrade, whether all end users will be on the same version is again an issue. <clears throat> but then again, uh, the positives is that uh, Usually we are talking about field health workers who are carrying this large pile of papers or books in the field visit. So as you can see, this is a one a in, in a rural area, one of the midwives uh, who are going, who is going for a field visit. Uh, but then again, rather than uh, carrying this large pile of papers, if they have this field health records in their mobile devices, things become much, much easier. So this is what we have heard from the end users. But then again, there are a lot of uh, practical issues. So the lessons learned, I'm in fact coming to the uh, last part of my presentation. Uh, now, what we understood was the mobile technology has a lesser learning curve com uh, compared to you know, learning how to use a computer. Because one thing is that uh, people are really familiar with mobile devices, not that everyone in a household has uh, a, smart a smart mobile phone, but ch chances are, uh, are such that nowadays, even in rural areas, at least, at least the uh, household head will have uh, a smartphone. And um, um, so at least, I mean, the, the, the midwife, if, I mean, the spouse may have at least used this device and they are kind of familiar. So we are kind of uh, starting off with the technology that people are uh, familiar at a base level. So with that, of course, they have minimal uh, learning to do on how to use the application rather than uh, learning how to use a computer. And then again, use of uh, familiar interfaces will increase the compliance and acceptability. So here, what we try to minimize is the complication of learning. Because if you have, uh, because, uh, for some field health workers who are not uh, tech savvy or who have not used technology at all, learning how to use a mobile device, a smart device uh, itself is a major task. So uh, if we try to you know, uh, even uh, introduce some new workflows with uh, new interfaces, this will further complicate things. And uh, what will happen is that uh, they will kind of reject the solution. So this is what we have understood that uh, you have to uh, keep the interfaces simple and uh, whichever familiar to them so that um, they will, uh, I mean, the acceptability at that level will be more. And then again, 
scaling up the technology has to be carefully planned. Like we may be too ambitious to launch an island uh, uh, kind of countrywide uh, implementation of uh, a mobile technology, uh, which may be, um, I mean, too ambitious, I must say, because uh, what we have found out is that to do a, a successful mobile implementation, there's a lot of infrastructure and uh, capacity building that is required. And again, uh, not only infrastructure and capacity building and the supervision and evaluation also has to be uh, uh, placed uh, well ahead prior to implementation. Otherwise, implementations don't tend to sustain because here, rather than you uh, using the web technology, a uh, lot depends on the mobile technology itself, which is very challenging. So you have to carefully plan the implementation. Maybe you will have to plan few years ahead on how to uh, get a proper funding, even to get the devices uh, if they if they st stop working. So those things also needs to be planned uh, well in advance prior to implementation in a new district. And then empowering the field health workers uh, helps for better adoption of technology and sustaining the solution. So. Sometimes uh, you may be the pioneer to introduce a technology uh, like a mobile technology, but what it does is like it kind of motivates the field health worker to learn technology because what we understood like uh, there were field health workers who were more than 50 years of age who tend to be generally um, not too keen to learn new things because they are towards the end of their career. So they don't feel like learning new things. But here, when we try to introduce the mobile technology, it becomes kind of uh, a mandatory tool they have to use uh, to uh, do the routine work. And with that, because they had to learn it and learning uh, on how to use a mobile phone is not that difficult. And also because there is peer support available at households. So sometimes there were user stories where these uh, field health workers, they just take the device at home and they try to learn how to use it from their children because the children finds it uh, much easier to use. And uh, in initial few days, the data entry was even done by their children, right? So, but then again, what it ultimately does is that it builds the capacity and again, motivate the end user so that uh, subsequently, if someone comes to uh, introduce a new program, maybe immunization program or something else, or else uh, try to uh, teach them on how to use the web interfaces of DHS2, uh, the adoption and the compliance will be much more. So these are a few uh, lessons that we have learned from this implementation. And again, this uh, entire project has been recognized uh, with few awards at global level also, the biggest of course uh, received the, the is a United Nations World Summit Award in year 2016 uh, for the innovation. All right, so thank you so much. Um, I guess I kind of tried to introduce uh, you something, uh, a, a, a new way of looking at uh, implementation of a mobile uh, solution, not on a particular use case. Uh, so this is a kind of a, a, a different uh, use case because we are using a custom mobile application. But uh, what I think uh, you, uh, you can take as the take home message would be the uh, final few slides about the challenges and uh, how to address them. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pamad, for this presentation. Very, very interesting, as usual. Thank you. Um, now I'm going to ask first to my colleagues, um, Marta or Rosé, would you have any questions for Pamad? Thank you, Alice. And thank you, Pamad. I, I, I think every time I see you presenting this work, I learn something new. It's, it's really impressive. So I I have uh, two I have two questions today or maybe three. That one is that uh, you made a very important point on that troubleshooting and supporting users uh, is very different when you are when you have a web system or a mobile system. So if you had to to identify or or to to highlight two or three main differences for supporting a national implementation on web or a national implementation in mobile, what would be your key recommendations with this difference when someone is moving to mobile? All right, uh, good question. So what happens is now, this is one reason like uh, the, we have a MCH, RMNCH program, uh, which has been well established and they're using DHS2 web for like last three to four years. 
they have been thinking when to go for mobile and when i asked from the program staff why are you not moving to mobile uh, they explain it uh, in a really nice way so the thing is here of course uh, now when you are using the dhs2 web uh, you have much better control because what we do is like okay so for example a classic issue about uh, uh, from a sub district level if someone is complaining okay i'm not seeing the data or or this screen is not leading uh, not loading and they contact us through a, a, a mobile call something like that we try to explain and um, try to figure out what has gone wrong uh, in case if um, if we really fail to understand what we do is we have all uh, taught them on how to use this remote desktop software so we try to connect to this uh, the, the, the the devices and see what is going wrong but then again i mean i'm trying to apply the same to a mobile situation this is not at all feasible because like nobody uh, is usually willing to give access to their mobile device uh, for for a national level user and then again we are never guaranteed whether that person will have have proper internet connection and then uh, uh, due to different uh, challenges we might not able to be capture uh, we, not, we might not be able to capture the exact requirement so this is where you need to like if 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 all these fail there should be some mechanism to uh, handle this at field level because otherwise the device entire device has to come to the national level so this itself is very challenging so this is what we can minimize by having uh, some capacity available for troubleshooting at that sub district level so without building that capacity and if we try to you know implement uh, uh, the same program which is running nationally at uh, web web uh, using the dhs2 web and uh, try to use the mobile it's going to fail because we have had some uh, experience in the past yeah we tried to do that and uh, it didn't sustain that well okay thank you and and um, maybe somehow link to this you also had a line uh, highlighting repair and maintenance so this is kind of sounds a bit like touching hardware sounds a bit like a uh, repair and maintenance of the devices so we are not talking only right now of the app is not syncing it cannot open or these kind of things but about the devices themselves so did you have any kind of strategy for this and were the devices did the device belong to the to the country or to the users yeah. yeah so here of course uh, in this use case uh, mainly the device was uh, owned by the ministry so it's not user device but then again um, the issue is like as i mentioned uh, during the first 2 3 years of implementation we had this uh, the warranty support so in that time uh, the repair was i mean well organized but then again when we uh, but there was a time in some certain areas as i mentioned we could not we were not in a position to replace the device uh, after the devices the hardware reaching the end of life so in these cases we ask the users if they are willing to use their own devices and we'll be providing them with the same incentive that is a mobile data incentive we will be providing so here again if uh, what we advise was that if they were going to purchase a device always try to purchase with uh, with uh, i mean some supplier who's providing good uh, support and service uh, repairs which is available at their own i mean that area because otherwise uh, we highlighted the issues they might uh, encounter if you try to go for a cheaper device with minimal support so this is one thing we have been emphasizing even to the ministry people as well as if someone was actually going to buy a device uh, to be more concerned about the repair and uh, services okay that's uh, interesting i don't think we see many projects with this uh, years of experience already being implemented uh with mobile so it's always very interesting um so my last question is now i mean after 5 years no you have the, the that project uh up and running for a long time so for for those users uh did the the fact that having the mobile already deployed mm -hmm. open the door for other programs being mobile as well did you expand somehow the use of the of the mobile at the level of the community health worker beside i mean from apart from nutrition or or it's still uh, mainly nutrition only yeah so uh what happened was uh, in all these districts we were planning to implement the mch program early this year so that was all uh, planned because the, we have built the capacity 
but unfortunately due to COVID, we have not been able to implement the MCH. But in one of these districts, uh, which is the Jaffna districts, they have been using this for uh, two other programs. One is uh, uh, cause of death and the other one is for verbal autopsy. So these two programs, they have been using uh, the same mobile devices. Then again, I mean, uh, these are not national programs that have been installed. So uh, they had some provincial level, uh, we have a provincial health ministry also. So that particular district, uh, the province that it belongs, they uh, implemented these two programs. So for those programs, uh, the same device was used and uh, because they had already some understanding on how to use the device and the application, it was uh, helpful. Okay, yeah, very, very, very good to see that in some places it allows for for expanding and and reaching more more domains. So that was my last question, um, Alice. If you wanna, <clears throat> and thank you, Bomot. Thank you again. Thank you both. Um, we have one question from um, a participant on Slack that I'm going to read, but I wanted also to mention, like, if any of our participants, if you would like to ask a question live to Pamod, please raise your hand and um, I will give you the floor. So if you're interested in asking a question, you can ask it directly here. Just raise, click on the raise hand button so that I know that you want to ask a question. Um, in the meantime, we have one question on, on Slack, Pamod. Um, a participant is asking uh, about monthly data bundle being used for before and on month. Mm. Okay, so he's asking how was addressed this problem? Uh, okay, if I understand the question properly, uh, is he asking like in case you have a monthly data bundle that you provide to be used the entire month and it is finished uh, before the end of month, how I address it? I yes, yeah. Is. yeah, okay. So what we did was like, I mean, like um, what could have been, I mean, the options that were available, either we have to ask, okay, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, you can't do anything till next month. Of course, that's not a good option. Then option number two would have been we, we could have considered giving them a top up, which again is not an administratively easy decision to take because uh, this, I mean there there can be so many variables that that they have to consider. So what we just asked uh, all of them uh, it was that like these health workers they were supposed to report uh, to the uh, the that uh, medical public health medical doctor's office at least once a week for for different official matters. And these officers, we made sure that they have a good uh, internet connectivity and the Wi-Fi um, is available. So what we said was, okay, I mean, yeah, good, true enough, we are not getting daily synchronization, fine. But at least like when you pay that visit uh, uh, at least once a week to that office, use the uh, Wi-Fi uh, facility that is available in that office and try to synchronize. And in case if, you are, if they are not uh, able to do so, we, we instructed the medical doctors who are supervising them to um, uh, uh, ask them, question them why it was not done during these review meetings. So with these two uh, mechanisms, we were able to uh, get the data from the mobile device into our uh, DHS to central repository at least once a week. So this is the strategy that we have used. Thank you so much, Pamad. <laughs> 